Hi everyone, my name is Frank Westfall and in this video I will show you how to scan your home private network and log into some of the devices on that network. This can be handy if you want to simply get a device count on your network or to look for rogue devices, devices that shouldn't be on your network that are, or if you want to log into your home router for example and do some configurations on it. Scanning networks is useful for many other things as well, but those are some common reasons for wanting to scan a network. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe for more computer tutorial videos. In this video, I will do the following. One, show the difference between a home private network and a public network. Two, show how to find the network ID or network IDs of your home network or networks. Three, show how a computer or device can sit on two different networks at the same time. Four, use that information to run a network scan on one or both of these networks. Five, demonstrate logging in to some of the devices on the network over the network. And six, show the basic ping command to check fundamental level network communication. For this video, all you need is a computer with internet access. Let's get to it. So what is the difference between a private home network and a public network? The technical difference between those two is that private networks are not routable on internet routers. So if someone has a 192.168.1.0 network at their home and you have that at your home and you try to reach that network, the internet routers simply drop that traffic. They're not even gonna attempt to route an IP address that's within the private address ranges. So if you look at a network and you see it start with 10, 172, or 192, you know that you're sitting on a private network. And public IP addresses, simply put, are routable through public internet routers. If I try to reach one of these IP addresses, the public routers won't drop that traffic and they will attempt to try to reach it. Your home router actually has both a public IP address and a private IP address. Private networks are also commonly referred to as the LAN side or local network and public internet networks are commonly referred to as the WAN side or simply the internet. So in this diagram you can see that we have a number of different devices sitting on a home private network and their respective IP addresses and then we can see the router which is sitting on both the home private network and the public internet and it has a public IP address and a private IP address. And that's why a router is so critical. It translates your private network traffic into publicly routable traffic, which then can reach its destination on the internet. Now we're gonna take a look at the networks that this computer is sitting on right now, and then also one of my other computers. What I've done is I've turned my phone hotspot on, and I've connected to that wireless network. So I'm connected to my phone on my wireless network adapter, and then I'm connected to my home network on my wired network adapter. And those are two separate networks. Now we're gonna take a look at how we can find out the network IDs of those and IP addresses of devices on those networks. So we can go in the search run bar and hit CMD and open a command prompt uh, for this purpose, it does not have to be elevated. And if I type in ipconfig slash all, I'm going to see a list of the network adapters and information about those connections. So this is my wired Ethernet adapter right here. And I can see that it is connected to my home router which has an IP address of 192.168.1.1. I'm not gonna go into IP addressing and subnet masks right now, but basically for this class of home private network, which is the most common one, the first three numbers in the IP address are the network ID, and the last one is the actual device IP address. So the network ID of this network is 192.168.1.0 and then the first device on that network is the router 192.168.1.1 and then that router is functioning as a DHCP server which simply means it gives out IP addresses 
to other devices that come on the network, such as this computer. And it's also the DNS server, which simply means it translates domain names to IP addresses so that the traffic is routable on routers. And then I can see the IP address of this actual computer. So it's sitting on the network 192.168.1.0 and it has the IP address 192.168.1.26. Now, this computer is sitting on two networks. So if I scroll down, I can take a look at my wireless adapter. And this is through my phone hotspot. And because the phone is functioning as the default gateway and the DHCP and DNS servers, this has a different network ID, as you can see. It's 192.168.61.0. That's the network ID of my phone's hotspot network. And then the phone itself, which is also the router, 192.168.61.51. And then this laptop's IP address, 192.168.61.129. Just by doing this command, I can see that I'm sitting on two different networks. I know the network IDs of those networks. I know the router IP address for both those networks. And I know the IP address that I'm assigned on both those networks. And going back to the network adapters, if you double click one of those adapters under general, you can see it passing traffic in real time. These numbers change, sent and received. And same thing with this one. So why is any of that information relevant? Well, we can do a number of things over the network. Now I'm going to download and install a network scanner tool. There are a number of network scanner tools out there. Angry IP is a very common one. I started using IP scan 24 a while back and I like it. So I've just stuck with it. It's always been able to do the job for me. It's called advanced IP scanner. I'm going to download this directly from advancedipscanner.com and run it. They have a portable version. The run only version doesn't actually install. I install it because I use it pretty regularly, but you can just do a run version if you don't want to actually install anything. And of course you can always uninstall afterwards. I'm going to install that. Yes. And I'm going to run it. Minimize this, bring this up a little bigger. So it detected one of the networks that this computer is sitting on, and we could run a scan on that right now. This is 192.168.61.0 network ID, and the IP address range for this network is 192.168.61.1 to 192.168.61.255. So I'm going to scan that. And this is the network that my phone created when I turned on the phone's hotspot. So now that the scan has completed, we can see the router IP address. We know that from our command prompt research. And then here is the laptop and my desktop is actually sitting on both networks as well at this time. And this is just a broadcast IP address for the entire network. So how do we use this? Well, there are a number of tools in addition to the information that this gives us about what's on this network. For example, this is the router, which is my phone. I could try to do an HTTP or HTTPS connection to it, which would be a website if it's hosting its own website, which it is not. Could try HTTPS as well. So nothing. The phone isn't going to respond because it's not hosting its own website. But what if... I tried to do something with my desktop, such as remote desktop protocol. There we go. Let's log into that. And just real quickly, when you're making remote desktop connections, you have to specify the domain and the user unless it's cached. And the domain, if it's not on a domain network, is the name of the computer. So it's either going to be yourwork.com or yourwork.net or whatever domain network you're on. Or if you're connecting to your own computers, it's going to be your computer name and then backslash your username and then your password. It needs that information. It needs the domain, the username, and the password. And I'm going to say yes. And now I'm just making a connection to 
my desktop. Here you can see I have a picture of the Big E. <laughs> I'm kind of a World War II nerd. And if I go to network adapters here, you can see again that my desktop as well is sitting on both these networks. This is the desktop wired ethernet connection and this is the desktop wireless ethernet connection. This is actually a virtual network interface for Hyper-V. So that's one way I can use this information and then if I just double click this, I can see what resources are available on it as well. Log into it again. And here you can see I have a number of resources available that are shared out off of that computer onto the network. For example, if I want to print on the printer that's connected via USB to my desktop, I can share it out on the desktop and then it becomes available to the whole network. Printers can be shared out on a computer that they are connected to via USB, or printers can sit on a network directly via wireless or wired network connections. And they can also do both of them simultaneously. So I'm going to actually add this printer. I'm gonna add it manually. And I can do it by shared printer name. You can see that they show how it's represented, backslash, backslash, computer name. So I type in backslash, backslash, desktop one, which is the name of my desktop computer, and then another backslash, and then it shows me the options that are available to connect to. Those are two different printers that I have shared out on there. So I'm gonna connect to this printer, successfully added the printer, next, and I'm gonna actually set this as default. I could print a test page. There that goes. And now that printer has been installed on this computer and if I want to print something, it's one of the options. Brother printer on desktop one. So I could print. You'll also notice that I have a network share set up. And this is so I have a centralized location for any computer that I put on this network. If I want to consolidate the data, which in my case I do, I want to have it on a large drive and then centrally located. So regardless of what computer I'm on, I can access the same data and I can keep it all in order by storing it in a central location. So I have a network share and just a variety of stuff in there. And I can save stuff to that network share. So say for example, I create a document. And then I wanna save this. Again, I can type in backslash backslash desktop. This is what's called a UNC path. That's a UNC path. And you can continue on. I could go network share and then go directly to that folder. There I see the network share. I can double click that and then I can save this test document on my network share. So that's one network that this computer's sitting on. What about the other one? I'm gonna change this to, if we remember from command prompt, if we go back to command prompt, we can see that we did a network discovery on this network, but what about this network? So that's what we're going to do now. 192.168.1.1 to 192.168.1.255. Now we're going to scan this network. All right, that scan has completed. And now we can see that 192.168.1.1, we know that that is the default gateway, DHCP server and DNS server. That means it's the router. And you'll notice there's an option here because this is hosting a website. So we could log directly into the router from here. Maybe you don't know your router's IP address. It's usually .1. It could have a different network ID, but you don't need to know the router's IP address because you can easily find it out using command prompt and or a network scanning tool. I'm not gonna actually log in, but this is my home router. And you can see that the resources of desktop one show up here as well. And one of the most fundamental and useful tools regarding networks is the ping tool. Ping simply sends a request for a reply from a device that's on a network. It just says, hey, are you there? 
And if you get a response, you know that that device is communicating properly on the network. It's a basic network level communication test. So for example, I could ping this router and it's responding. And then you can also see how fast your network is by the time. So this is less than one millisecond response time. That's really fast. It should be because it's sitting 50 feet away through wire. So it should be very fast. I could ping my laptop, which is this computer. And I could ping the desktop and that's responding as well. Now, say for example, you do a scan on your home wireless network and you know that there are two phones one TV and two computers on that network and a router, but instead of seeing six devices on that network, you see seven. And that's not counting the broadcast IP address. That's always gonna be there on every network. So you could ask yourself, hey, what's this seventh device? I'm only supposed to have six devices. I have two phones, a TV, and two computers, and a router, that's six devices. Where's the seventh one coming from? If you can identify which device that seventh one is, you can try to learn more information about it. And with the MAC address, of the seventh device, you could go into your router and blacklist that device. And then if you find out it's something you actually use that you didn't know was there, it could be like, you know, a wireless thermostat or some device that's part of the internet of things. Those are sitting on networks and they have IP addresses and MAC addresses just like every other network device. Or it could be someone that is sitting on your home network and you don't want them on your network. So you can potentially find rogue devices and then blacklist them on your router. If you have rogue devices on a wireless network, the best thing to do would just be change the password. So all the devices have to re-authenticate. And if there was a rogue device that, you know, someone somehow got your password and they were using your home network either just for internet access or maybe they're actually trying to log into your devices and hack you. You just change your wireless password and they would have to re-authenticate, which means they'd have to know the new password. That's a basic summary of home networks and how you can be more aware of what's going on in your home network, how you can log into devices on your home network. Thank you for watching. Again, please subscribe to this channel for more computer tutorials videos and feel free to post any questions in the comment section. I will respond. Bye.